essence behind all of our actions. You see, to be grounded in love is to anchor our very being in the unconditional and transformative love of God. A love that defines, a love that shapes, and a love that propels us, not backwards, but forward. While to be guided by purpose is to move with intentionality and with direction. Yes. Led by the divine calling that each of us carries within our soul. Now, when you put these two together, these principles form a, a solid foundation upon which we can build a life of significance and fulfillment. But as we build that today, I want you to consider the story of a, of a small, unassuming seed planted in fertile soil. Beneath the surface un, of the unseen to the eye, it begins to sprout roots, grounded itself firmly within the earth. Now, as it grows, Guided by the unseen force of plant life, it stretches upward towards the sun, blossoming into a flower of breathtaking beauty. This flower, grounded in the earth and guided by its inherent purpose to grow and bloom, serves as a vivid illustration of our own journey. Yes, yes. You see, just like the seed, you and I are called to root ourselves in the love of God, Amen. drawing nourishment from the endless wellspring and guided by our God-given purpose, we are destined, yes. destined to rise. We are destined to flourish, oh, yeah. and we are destined to manifest the beauty of our own unique contributions to the world all around us. Yeah. So you see kingdom citizens and saints in 2024, grounded in love, guided by purpose, is not merely a thing. It's a call from God yeah. Yeah. to each of us to embrace the power and potential of living a life that's been anchored in divine love and directed by divine purpose. You see, like the seed, like the seed, our growth and impact are maximized when we firmly, when we are firmly planted in the soil of God's love and committed to the kingdom of God and its principles. Yes. Now, believe me, when we allow ourselves to grow, when we allow love to grow us and purpose to guide us, we become a people transformed. A community that becomes united. And a world that becomes enriched by the beauty of God's unfolding plan. Yes, yes. that we've learned that it encompasses all of the purposes in this room oh, built yeah. in us. So now, as we explore our scripture, mm -hmm. each from distinct parts of the Bible, collectively, they provide a theological foundation for the sermon. You see, Deuteronomy presents Moses' his final instructions to the Israelites before they entered the promised land. You see, it's a book of covenantal renewal, emphasizing the laws and commandments God gave his people, yes, yes. commanding the Israelites to love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your might. Yes. Moses underscores the essence of the covenant a relationship that's rooted in love. Now, in Luke, Jesus begins his public ministry in Nazareth. <laughs> the first one's ministry comes to the end 
and the second one's ministry begins. So as Jesus began his public ministry in Nazareth by reading from the scroll of Isaiah, proclaiming that his mission to bring good news to the poor, proclaim freedom for the prisoners and setting the oppressed free. Jesus declares himself as the fulfillment of Isaiah's prophecy. You see, this proclamation of love and liberation is central to Jesus' purpose on earth. He embodies, he embodies the unconditional love of God through action that brings freedom and healing. Signaling the embreaking of God's kingdom. In his coming and in his presence, he tells Satan by just being here that you no longer have the last word of a human predicament, but now I have it. Now, Paul writes to the Romans simply in a, in a context, if you will, of diverse challenges, including persecution to affirm the certainty of God's love in Christ Jesus. Paul's assertion that nothing will be able to separate us. Nothing will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. It serves as an emphatic declaration of the permanence and preservation of God's love. It reassures us, my brothers and sisters, that regardless of external circumstances, not internal, but external, God's love is unfailing and inseparable. You see, we are called. We are called to understand God's love as our purpose. We are called to understand God's love as our purpose. Deuteronomy 6, 5 says, Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength. Love the Lord your God. In other words, you can do this. God gives you the ability to love him with everything that you got, heart, soul, and with all your strength. Here we have not only the essence of our relationship with God, but also the trajectory for for our lives. You see, to be grounded in love means recognizing that our very purpose is rooted in the love relationship that we are invited into by God himself. Therefore, we must embrace our identity as God's beloved and to live out that love in every aspect of our lives. You better look at somebody and say, you can do that. And while we're doing it, manifesting it in our relationships, our services, and our mission in the world. See, this love is not passive. It's an active engaging force that shapes our identity, directs our action, and it influences our relationships. You see, to love God in such a matter is to see our lives as a response to the love that he has first shown us. A love that is unconditional, sacrificial, and all-encompassing. Did you know that that's how God loves you? unconditional, which means that you can't be bad enough for God. It's unconditional, sacrificial. He sacrificed his son and all encompassing, which means it includes everything. We are created for a purpose. In other words, you're not here by accident. Mm -mm. Ain't no accident in you. You are purposed. That's why Jeremiah 1.5 says, before I formed you in the womb, before you became existent in this atmosphere, in your mother's womb, he said, I knew you. In the spirit realm where you were first, I knew you. And before you came out of the womb, I consecrated you. 
Now, 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 he was talking to Jeremiah. That's why he went on and said, I appointed you a prophet to the nation. Whatever your purpose is, is what he has appointed you for. So he says, Henry Warren, before you were in your mother's womb, I knew you. And before you came out, I consecrated you and I appointed you as a preacher of my word. Oh, I dare you to fill it in. I dare you to say it and put you in there. What did God purpose you to do? In other words, I appointed you to do just that. Here we have the very purpose and reason for the creation of man. You're not an accident. Don't never let nobody tell you and make you think that you're an accident. No, you may not be fulfilling what God got for you to fulfill, but let me tell you what, it ain't too late. You see, God is love. And love must not have, love must not only have an object, but it must have that which can reciprocate that love. Yeah. See, that's why love is so unique. See, to reciprocate means to return yeah. the same feeling, yeah. actions, or intention that someone else has shown toward you. That's why you call it I've fallen in love because you begin to return back to me the feelings that I have for you and the actions that I demonstrated to you and my intention to want to be with you. When you look at the created universe with all of its glories, it cannot enjoy or reciprocate God's love. What do you mean, Pastor? A tree can't love God back. A plant can't love God back. It can't reciprocate that love that God gives to it. Yeah. God created you and me that we might be able to reciprocate the love that he shows upon us. So in other words, I can love God just as much as God loves me. And once I learn how to love God, I can love you the same way because that same unconditional yeah. love that God had for you, you got it. And as a people, we have always demonstrated it. That's why we can forgive those who lynched our parents. That's why we can forgive those who shot our boys. No, we don't forgive, but we can forgive them because we have, it's an unconditional, when you, when you think, when you can't think of it as unconditional, then you have problems with how can they do that? But when you allow the love of God to filtrate in your soul, yeah. you realize you have an unconditional kind of love that no matter how bad you are. Yeah. 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 I can love you. You see, the created world that be unresponsive, unfashionable, according, affording God no pleasure at all. See, the answer to the heart cry of God, the answer to the heart cry of God, because when God put everything in place, there's a story that said he was lonely. So he decided to make man. You see, the answer to the heart cry of God was the creation of man. Man is a being with a will and intelligence capable of choosing, capable of choosing to love. He was created by love for love, but given the power to choose to love. In other words, you can choose not to love God because he gave you that will. Or you can choose to love God because he gave you that will. See, the scripture reveals that God's love for us is deeply personal and it's specific. You see, to understand God's love is our purpose is to recognize that we are not accident, an accident of nature or a product of chance. Yes. We were created by a loving God with intention and purpose. God created man as to his spirit and soul 
and made man as to his body. Now, let's expand our understanding of purpose from loving God to loving as our mission. John 15, 12 says, my command is this, love each other as I have loved you. It's your mission. Amen. It's not inward focus, but it's outward reaching. See, the love that God has poured into our heart is, is meant to overflow to those around us. To love others as Christ loves us means seeing others through the, the lens of God's love and treating them with the dignity and respect Amen. that deserves as fellow bearers yes. of God's image. Now, when you demonstrate that and live that, you'll find that there's nobody else ever that you can look down on. Amen. Because you will transition what you thought you saw to seeing them through the lens of God. Do you remember the golden rule? You don't hear that much anymore. Do unto others as you would have them, as you would have them do unto you. This has been our role of love in black history. No matter what has ever happened, we always kept that in our heart, do unto others as you would have them do unto you. See, the role of love in black history, Luke, the fourth chapter, remember what it says, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the broken heart, to proclaim liberty to the captives and recover the sight of the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. Luke 4, 18 and 19 serves as a powerful testament to the role of love in overcoming adversity. If you want to overcome it, learn how to love. We're going to tell you how. For see, this scripture is, is symbolic of enduring spirit, of the enduring spirit of the black history. See, where despite the cruelties that was inflicted upon our community, love has not only survived, but love has thrived. Guiding movements toward justice and toward freedom. Listen, our history has taught us the importance of recounting our history, acknowledging the struggles and, and celebrating our victories that have been achieved through love and perseverance. See, we must never stop learning from our past. Never stop learning. See, Psalm 78, 4 says, we will not hide them from their descendants. We will tell the next generation the praiseworthy deeds of the Lord, his power, and the wonders he has done. They're simply saying that we're going to tell each and every one of our generations that when we came to the Red Sea, he parted it. We're going to tell our generations that when we needed bread, he sent it down. We're going to tell them when we needed meat, he allowed the quails to fly low enough that we can just reach and grab it. We're going to tell our generations when we needed water, he turned bitter water into sweet water. We're going to turn our generation that we learn how to sing on our way to fight because we knew that the battle was not ours. It belonged to God. You see, the past is a gold mine of experience. I'm talking about our past, rich with lessons learned the hard way. Yes. Success is to emulate and failures to avoid. That's our history. See, those who cannot remember the past are condemned to repeat it. 
Now, you got to understand that the world, the cultures that are against our culture, is not designed to help us survive or overcome. Because everybody knows that one of the greatest cultures on this earth is our culture. So therefore, to come against us, years ago, February, was always demonstrated in all of our schools. Every class looked at February as Black History Month. They've taken it out. Why? Because they don't want you to know your past. Because if you cannot remember the past, you're condemned to repeat it. You see, learning from the past is it, standing on the shoulders of giants. It allows us to see further and clear. I'll never forget during the sermons that I, that I preached, remember? And if all of us standing and we're at the same level, all you got to do is just take one step higher. That's all. Just raise yourself one little easy bit higher and you stand above everybody else. Some of us got to just raise up just a little higher from where we are because people will desire to hold you down. Raise yourself up. Lift yourself up. You're standing on shoulders that have already paid the price for us. Learning from our past making informed choices and forging paths toward a brighter future. Yeah. See, it's about taking the wisdom that's been handed down through generations and listen, and using it to steer the ship through the life turbulent waters because there's some dangers in those waters. <laughs> Ensuring that we don't just go with the flow but we navigate with purpose and insight. See, we got to remember our history. And even as we share, I remember telling a little story how this works. I know that 10 steps up, there's a big hole. If you keep walking the way you're walking, you're going to fall in that hole. Well, Pastor, how you know? Because I fell in that hole. A week later, I went down the same path, thought that the hole might have been covered up and fell in it again. Then I learned that the hole ain't never left. So I see you headed in that same path. Now, if you take two steps to the left and then take one giant step and go forward, When you get past that tree down there, that oak tree, then make one big step to the left and then two small ones, and that hole will be behind you. Now, you can either do what I told you to do, or you can go straight ahead and fall in that same hole that I fell in twice. You see, our history Share with our kids will help them not fall in the same places where we fall in. You don't have to make the same mistakes that some of us have made because we are telling you what not to do. You want me to give you another one right now? For those of you that think you have arrived, that think you're on the same level as other cultures. I want to remind you of something. You ain't never going to get away with what they do. Did you hear me? You do what they do. You ain't never going to get away with what they do. Well, you got to remember that love serves as a force of change. I like what Michael 6 and 8 says. It says, speak to the heart of what it means to embody love in our action. He has shown you, O mortal, what is good and what does the Lord require of you to act justly, to love mercy, 
and to walk humbly with your God. This is what we are called to do. And we've demonstrated that. See, in the context of our black history, this scripture reminds us that our fight for justice and equality is rooted in love. A love that seeks the well-being of others. We ain't never wished harm on people. It's a love that seeks the well-being of others that will act with mercy and humility. See, I'm talking about a kind of love that has been the cornerstone, the bedrock of the civil rights movement, the bedrock of our leaders who, despite facing unmeasurable hatred, chose love as their weapon. If I was to use this as a weapon, you can see me coming with it. Right? You can only imagine what I'm going to do with it. But if I'm coming at you, you see it. Even if I take this off, now I have like a sword and a shield. It's coming, Elder. It's coming. It's coming. May I don't need to take it off. I'm going to leave it on because I can swing it like this. And when you think that you're getting away, I can extend it. Ah. (laughs) If I had a knife, you can see me coming at you with that. But you cannot see love. Mm -hmm. you can't see the weapon of love it's the greatest weapon brothers and sisters that you have you see this is how we continue the work of healing this is how we simply continue if you will the work of liberation and the work of reconciliation in our communities and beyond Well, I'm almost through, and I knew I wasn't going to finish this because of the richness of who we are. So I want to just dive shortly in how love in the context of Valentine and Lent supports guided in love Guided by purpose. Now, our Romans, the eighth chapter, verses 38 and 39, remind, let me remind you what it says. For I am persuaded, I love this, these scriptures, that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor things present, nor things to come. I think it covers everything. Nor height, nor death, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus. Right here, Romans affirms that nothing can separate us from God. Beautifully unfolding the essence of what? Divine love. Now stay with me now. That is celebrated both during Valentine's Day and through the Lenten season. See, Valentine's Day, as we know, is a celebration of earthly and divine love, traditionally associated with romantic love, right? Often also offers an opportunity for Christians to reflect on the nature of God's love. Valentine's Day can be a reminder of, listen now, the intimate, personal love God has for you. A kind to to the most tender and caring human relationship. Valentine's Day can remind us that our first and most enduring love relationship is with God himself. 
You see, this divine love then models how we are to love one another genuinely and selflessly. I tell people, you know, sometimes they ask a woman when she say, I don't feel in love with a man, they, they ask you, have you seen how he reacts around his mother? Because they want to know how does he treat his mother. If he shows love toward his mother, then I know he'll show love toward you because mama has taught him how to love. Well, the man and the woman needs to ask about each other. How is their love relationship with God? Because if they love God, then I know they can love me. If they learn the unconditional love of God, then I know that when I say the wrong thing, they can unconditionally forgive me and love me back. Yeah, I'm going to keep meddling. See, no, no, I'm not. See, the divine love that, that then models how we are to love one another genuinely and selflessly. See, I'm really trying to help somebody while I help myself. Love is the greatest gift that we have. And we need to learn how to prosper there. Now, now take Lent, a season of reflective and sacrificial love, contrasting with the offer celebratory tone of Valentine's Day. Lent is simply a season that is marked by the reflection of repentance, the preparation of Easter. See, it's a time when we focus on the sacrificial love of Christ oh, yeah. who gave his life for our salvation. Yeah. See, it's the love that is described in Romans 8, 38 and 39. It's a love that chose to endure the cross, yeah. ensuring that no sin, no suffering, and no death could ever separate us from the love of God. Amen. Well, kingdom citizens, saints of God, as I come to a close, <clears throat> finally, I want to lift up you a defining love. A love that is so profound. A love that is so powerful. That it becomes the very essence of who we are. This love, my brothers and sisters, isn't just an emotion that warms our heart. It is the bedrock upon which we stand. It is the compass that guides our journey. And the force that propels us forward into a future that's filled with promise and prosperity. Father, have mercy. Let us not forget that we are called to ground ourselves in love that defines our purpose. This love is not passive. As I said, it is an active as the blood flowing through our veins as dynamic as the breath in our lungs. It is a love that drove Moses to lead his people out of bondage. It's a love that inspired Harriet Tubman to return to the South again, again and again, freeing her brothers and sisters from the shackles of slavery. I'm talking about a love that has powered love is what drove Martin Luther King Jr. to dream of a day which his children would be judged by the content of their character and not by the color of their skin. I want to leave you with the answer to this question. How do we embody this love? Uh, I want you to look to the life of Jesus Christ. Uh, look to the life of Christ, uh, to the one who showed us uh, what love is looked like uh, in action. Uh, I'm talking about Jesus, uh, the Son of God, uh, who fed the 
hungry. I'm talking about Jesus uh, who healed the sick, uh, preached good news uh, to the poor. Uh, do you know him? Uh, I'm talking about Jesus uh, who nailed down to wash uh, his disciples' feet. Uh, Talk about love. How to love one another. Father, have mercy. He took the same love on the old rugged cross. He bore our sins. He bore our sorrows. And he bore our burdens with nails in his hands. Nails in his feet. With a crown of thorns upon his head. He showed us. He showed us what love means. He showed us when he laid him down. In a power too. And on the third day, he rose. He rose from the dead, conquering death, conquering hell, conquering the grave, so that we might know the fullness of God's love. But he didn't stop there, he ascended into heaven, leaving us with a comforter the Holy Spirit to guide us, oh my God, to empower us, hallelujah, to keep us in his love that calls us, calls us to action. Brothers and sisters, let this be the year that we rise, grounded in love, guided by purpose and let the world see in us the light of Christ's love shining brightly and becoming a beacon for all of us. Grounded in love. Guided by purpose. You're grounded in love. Guided by purpose. Yes. Hallelujah. Come on, give God some praise, if you will. Oh, hallelujah. I love you. I love you. I love you, Lord, today. Yeah, you know it in such a special way. That's why I praise you. I lift you up and I magnify. That's why my heart Come on, take it up and let's sing it again. I love you, I love you, Lord, today. Come on, stand with me all around the sanctuary. Stand with me at home. Because he cared for me in such a special way. That's why I I praise you. I lift you up. I magnify your name. Yeah, that's why. The greatest gift of love is seen on the cross. The empty cross means he died for our sins and he rose again. Why did he do it? that we might return back to our original purpose to fulfill God's purpose in our lives. In order for that to be fulfilled, Christ had to come, Christ had to live, Christ had to die, Christ had to rise from the dead and ascend to heaven. So that through the power of the Holy Spirit, you can say yes to this question. If you were to die today, are you sure beyond a doubt that you would make it to heaven? Now you think about that. Think about what it means as we talked about grounded in love and guided by purpose. Are you sure that you would make it to heaven? Are you sure? 
You ought to be able to say yes because he died for you. But if not, every believer here is praying right now for you out there who can't say yes. We want you to have a yes in your life today. Am I right? We want you to have a yes in your life today. So join us and pray this prayer with us and allow the Lord to enter into your life. Dear Lord Jesus, on this fourth day of February, I desire to live in your purpose for the rest of my life. I know I am a sinner and I ask for your forgiveness. I believe you died for my sins and rose from the dead. Right now, I confess and turn from my sins and invite you to come into my life by faith and faith alone. I receive your gift of salvation. I am ready to trust and follow you as my Lord and Savior for the rest of my life. Amen. Amen. Hey, brother, sister, come on, let's praise them. There's a yes out there in the atmosphere. Somebody has said yes, which means that we are not on our way to heaven by ourselves. But every day, every Sunday, others are joining us. The second invitation is to reconnect. Because members have traveled far, because members are, are no longer in place to be here, you can still be here through our social media. You can still connect back into your ministry. Do it right now. Then for those of you here, the third one is that if you're looking for a place of worship, a place to grow, a place to be used with the gifts that God has given you, this is the place for you right here. In person or even online, you can unite with us. And your gifts can be used to help grow and build the kingdom of God. For the gospel said that the gospel of the kingdom must be preached all over the world. Then the end will come. We are on a mission. Is there one? Is there one? God bless you. Uh, ministers, pastors, you may return. As we remain standing and prepare for our benediction blessing, God has been doing some wonderful things. I'm going to get us out of here. Just bear with me. Amen. Oh, my God. Uh-uh. Go pick it up. Come on, give God some praise. Come on, our sister. Oh, my God. Mm. That's why you've been coming for so long. Are you coming to your night? Already, I, I got your name on the road ten times. In other words, you covered, girl. You covered. Come on, go ahead on. So this is to the Whitehead, our sister. She's Amen. returning with us. Amen. Come on, get out some praise. Now, there is a Holy Ghost shackle that I'm shackling you to me. You ain't going nowhere no more. We got work for you. You ready? You ready? We're going we're gonna to use you because God wants you used. He wants all of us. Will you let us do that? Welcome back home. Come, let's welcome our sister back home. We got work to do. Amen. Pastor, will you take her with you? Amen. All right. God bless you. Come on. Make sure that when we get ready to leave that you love on her. We're glad that she's back home. Now, have a seat for a minute. We're getting out of here. I know upstairs they're probably fussing now. They don't have to go in there and change the time. However, if they fussing at me, they are fussing at me, Mario confirmed. So here's the, what had happened was, we set a timer for the way service should be, the time frame. In that timer, because I know that the Holy Spirit Gets you all excited, and when you all witness the way you witness, y'all don't let me keep on in my sermon, so it makes it longer. It's y'all's fault. <laughs> and because the Holy Spirit does that, just extend the time from the beginning, because all you got to do is go back in there and push stop. But they'll just give me 15 minutes, and we're over that. So have they gone in and started back? Okay, come tell my own care. 
I want to share something with you, though. I want you to hear this. And those of you out there with us, don't leave yet. We're getting ready to do our benediction blessing. What I am trying to do, brothers and sisters, I am trying to set you up. I really am. You're either going to prosper this year or you're going to stop coming. Because you're going to stop wanting people to encourage you to prosper. But in order for me to help you have a year of prosperity, I'm asking God to pour in my spirit things that I need to pour in your spirit. So if you notice lately, we've been giving you some steps to follow, some things to encourage you to do. It's important that you do these so you can prosper. Now, I want you to report back to us either in writing or if you want to give a testimony, we'll put you on air, we'll record you. We got to show the world what prospering looks like. Listen to me. In our officers meeting, my statement to them was, if we're living in this purpose, and if we're, if we're living, having a year of prosperity, we need to show the world what that looks like. What does it actually look like? Our benediction blessing, as we learned, is the last thing that they would do in the biblical days when they went to the synagogues. People would stay. They wouldn't get up and leave like we do because they knew that the most important part was not the message that I just gave, but was the benediction blessing. So they would wait for the benediction blessing. Why? Because they knew whatever that benediction, benedicto, that blessing that God was going to pour out of the mouth of the servant upon his people was going to come true. And so they walked away expecting that. Some people walk away from here without expecting God to do what he just told me to tell you he was going to do. Mm -mm. So I want to give you some tools that I want you to use. So each morning, dedicate your day to God. You can go back and watch it. Asking him to ground you in his love and guide your steps according to his purpose. Secondly, actively look for opportunities to express God's love through acts of compassion and service to others. Number three, reflect each evening of the way you saw God's purpose unfolding in your life and in the lives around you. Number four, before you go to sleep, give thanks to God for his guidance and love, committing to flow, to follow him more closely with each passing day. Now the benediction blessing that we're about to give you will come true within the next seven days every day because this is what God told me to tell you and then here are the key steps to manifest the, the blessing I want you to prosper because if you prosper I prosper every Sunday God gives me his word it has more richness to it why because he's trying to pour into our spirits Amen. through empower to get wealth in every area of our lives. Amen. So will you stand? Will you lift up your hands and will you close your eyes and receive the benediction blessing? God wants me to tell you that may you be God grounded, grounded in God's eternal love and guided by his divine purpose. Feeling his presence in every moment and in every breath for the next seven days as you walk the path he has laid out for you. Open your eyes. Give God some praise. <laughs> now, my brothers and sisters, I love you with the love of God. And remember... No matter where you are, no matter what you do, and no matter what you say, come on, help me, everybody. Let the reign of God reign on you. We love you with the love of God.